Okay, so as a last little touch on the Reynolds number, let's look at how we can use it. So things we've seen before. First off, you can use it to distinguish between laminar and turbulent flow. So in a pipe that looked like less than 2100 was laminar, more than 4000 was turbulent, and external flow was more like 10 to the 5. Uh, number two, we use it to see if Bernoulli applies. So if the Reynolds number is huge, that means that the viscous forces are small relative to the momentum or the inertia of the flow, and that means that you can more or less assume it's inviscid. So huge Reynolds numbers, Bernoulli's pretty good. Uh, we also saw that you could use it to distinguish between flow regimes. For example, we talked about a golf ball and how it separates at two different locations depending on whether it's laminar or turbulent. Uh, and then lastly, we talked about using correlations, things like lift, drag, entrance length, friction factor. These are all things that we tend to graph as a function of Reynolds number. So to close out the discussion on it, now that we know a little bit more about a dimensional analysis, I want to talk about a final concept, which is scaling experiments. And this is actually a really simple idea, and here's what it is. If we want to do an experiment, we need the Reynolds number of the model to be the same as the Reynolds number of the prototype. Prototype. I think that language is a little confusing, which one's the model, which one's the prototype. So here's how I like to talk about it. Reynolds number of the experiment needs to be equal to the Reynolds number of the full scale object. So let's just do an example to show you what I mean here. Perhaps we want to do an experiment where we're going to put a quarter scale uh, car model in a wind tunnel. So if we want to run some test on a car and see how it's going to behave, if we use a scale model and maybe the prototype, the real car, drives at, uh, let's just say, 70 miles per hour. So we want to take a prototype, we want to scale it down to quarter scale, put it in a wind tunnel, and simulate as though that model, or that, that, that experimental model, is driving 70 miles an hour. Well, you don't get to just put it in at 70 because that's the full scale speed. What we have to do is keep the Reynolds numbers equal. So, rho VL over mu for the model, or the experiment, has to equal rho VL over mu for the prototype. And so with a little bit of algebra, we can solve this to see that the velocity of the model has to be equal to the velocity of the prototype times rho prototype over rho model times characteristic length of the prototype over characteristic length of the model, viscosity of the model over viscosity of the prototype. Now, we were talking about a quarter scale model, so that means the model is one fourth the size of the prototype, which means that this is, whoa, my bad. This is four to one. So if we do it in air, the densities and the viscosities stay the same, and so the only thing that changes is this four to one, which means that the velocity in the wind tunnel needs to be 70 miles per hour times 4, which is 280 miles per hour, and that's a pretty ridiculous wind tunnel experiment. So what are we going to do about that? Well, a common thing is to change materials. So for example, if we were to do this in water, instead. If we did it in water instead, then you would have density of the water, velocity in the water, length of the model, divided by viscosity of water, and that's equal to density of air, velocity of the air, length of the prototype, divided by viscosity of the air. And so when I solve this, the velocity in the water is equal to rho air over rho h2o, mu h2o over mu air, length of the prototype over length of the model, times the velocity 
that we would do it in air. And so going back to some numbers here, density of air looks like 1.22. I'm leaving the units out because they're all ratios, which means the units are going to cancel as long as I use the same table. 1.12 e minus 3 over 1.79 e minus 5. 4 to 1 for the scale of the model again. And then the original speed, 70 miles per hour. And here's where the benefit comes from. By switching to water, I got a factor of 1,000 reduction. And so when I crunch this out, I get 21.4 miles per hour. Much more reasonable. And so the point here is I keep the Reynolds number the same so that the scale model behaves the same as the full scale thing would. Only if I change it to run it in water instead of air, it keeps it at a reasonable enough speed that I might actually be able to conduct this experiment.